My name is Leo Connors, and welcome to The Ring and All Other Sports. Tonight, I got two special guests, professional wrestlers, Delilah Hayden and Derek Conway. Guys. What's going on? Long time no see. How, I am great. How are you guys doing? Good. Exhausted, but good. Yeah, good, good. Well, here we are. This is your second time. This is your fourth? Third. Or third? I was going to say okay. third, but yeah. Not bad, not I was bad. In the, the green room for the other one. Yes, one well, we, we, had, we did a special one with Mav, and yeah. that was really, really good. I love that episode, actually. People still talk about that episode. Yes. <laughs> All right, listen, let's get right into fan questions. Uh, Shannon Siofi? Coffee. Co wow. <laughs> That's my cousin. Wow. Yeah, that coffee. doesn't look Don't, like it, I, doesn't I look like it would sell coffee. I said the same thing. All right. Which member of the Conway section would storm the ring first? I have a feeling it's her. Okay. So, first off, I have to say it will only be for her. And I say that because it was her versus L with Tony Spencer at, the, at ringside for L. I'm holding my Aunt Kathy, yeah. who just recovered from knee surgery, or who just had knee surgery, who's holding back Shannon who's in a chair, she's holding back Shannon, who's trying to charge at Tony Spencer because Tony Spencer's harassing her. So it would be Shannon, but it would only be for her. Right. I can get the crap beat out of me. It's fine. Oh, that. So there is the cutest picture. Well, maybe not cutest, but memorable picture of like his grandmother when she was alive would also always be the big part of the Conway section. Someone was trying to put you so, through a, the plastic folding table. So Elkmania... I think uh, I was at that and show. And PG now, when they when you when they do the Beverly Beverly Elks, they put two plastic tables yeah. on the side. So before my grandmother passed, she was there. She was sitting at the tables, and it was um, it was a uh, big banquet, big bacon, uh, Brad Hollister. Yeah. Uh, and we were he, we were doing this whole thing through. It was like two times in the show, and he had just eliminated her. So he, I was focusing in on him because that was the angle that. Uh, Elk, before it was acquired by Proving Guns, wanted to portray. And then I eliminated him. He then pulled me out of the ring. Ah. And he's cleaning up one of the tables. And he he's doing the right thing, telling people to move. And my, he, but he says it to my grandmother, my Conway grandmother. And she yells an explicit at him and shows him her favorite type of bird. And then he and it's just, just a picture. I, I, I think I know what bird that is. It's the greatest it's a, picture. And and then he's holding me, and I just go do it. And he power bombs me through the. T I don't think my grandmother moved. I think either my dad or his sister tried to move her. Right. But like her baby boy is just it, two inches from her face, just being thrown through this plastic table. <laughs> who's dead to the world now? But it was just funny because he's clearing off the table. And she just goes, move! And she just, explicit, favorite bird. And I was just like, well, all right. This is it. This is the Conways. This is the Conway gene. And then I get power bombed right in front of her on the plastic table. I got to ask you, have you been put through a couple of tables at that venue in Beverly? Yeah. Because so, I definitely was at a show that they took, you came out and they put you through a table. So, um... The hoods pulled me over That's a table. That's who it was. It was the hoods. The hoods pulled me over a table. Okay. Um, Hollister put me... Th he put me on the table because it didn't break. Right. And then um, we'll get to this later, but uh, Dick Lane and I were having a, a title for title match, uh, and I was about to do a splash onto Dick, who was on the table. Tony Spencer came in and pushed me off the top, and me and Dick crashed through the table. So I... Which is something I've always wanted to do at that building was go from a corner to that right. uh, entrance table setup, um, but I didn't want the help of Tony Spencer. So uh, I've gone through, I've gone over and through two ta at least three tables in that building. And so, I know Tony Spencer is not nice to you. No, 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 at all. I mean, really, I don't even know if I like Tony Spencer anymore. <laughs> he he's jealous of me for spending so much time with her. That's yeah. why he comes after me. Right. I believe but. that. I definitely believe that. All right. So, Dan Ruckus, what was the best locker room rib you have seen or experienced? I don't know, Delilah. What was the best prank or, or rib in can the we locker do, room? Can we do small ones first before we get to Buck's massive so story? I, my two favorite um, are uh, 
wrestler who helped us early on and has helped us since. His name's Rob Vitulli. He doesn't wrestle anymore. Yeah, but I he's know done, Rob. Yeah. Good guy. Real good guy. So the first Newton show ever, for whatever reason, I had my gear, uh, which was pajamas, a shirt, and a, a um, Frightmare mask um, in a plastic bag. I forget why I didn't have a gym bag with me at the time. And I had was I was saying hi to everybody, and I put it down. Didn't realize that I I left it there. Rob then hides it on me. Yeah, I'm opening the show in a six, I believe it was like a six man elimination yeah. match. So now I'm scrambling trying to find my gear, and then eventually Rob shows me where my gear is and goes, "Never leave your gear alone." That was one of the first lessons Rob ever taught me. Yeah, and then Dan, who we who we know as Buck. Uh, was a former tag partner of mine. We love Buck to death. Is a constant pranker, and you don't know because he has just like Terry Funk, no knees. Yeah. So his he's getting up and down gimp. the stairs is horrible. Oh, right. <laughs> I have seen this man saran wrap titles, belts, bags, anything he can to the building in Murphy's in Manchester. He would just saran where he buys it. I don't know. They right. Buy in the ceiling, on Which that poles. one was my favorite. Like a duct was going across and someone's going around going, where's my backpack? I know I have my backpack. And he, he's also tall. So yeah. he got up there though. And it's up there. I'm just like, kept going. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to leave the joke. But, right. but the now big... for the novel. Yes. So he came up to me one day. You guys were par- tag team partners still at the time, right? Probably. And he goes, hey. Oh, why don't we prank Conway? And I'm like, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to hide his bag, saran wrap? He goes, no, let's move his car on him. He left his keys on the commentary desk with me. And I'm like, okay, not even going through my head. Oh, I only have a permit. Right. Only yeah. a permit. For those of you who didn't hear her, only a permit. So we start his car up and I back out. Buck has to direct me because I almost went just shot back out, even though it's a one-way street. Right. <laughs> And we moved his car over to a different parking lot. It was diagonal from where my par- my car was parked. <laughs> Which we were, s- I felt bad after because what I didn't realize was so in between where Murphy's gym was, there is literally a place called Mike's Pub and Crub, which makes dive bars look like a five-star bar. Okay. That's how bad it is. Dive isn't even close. Yeah. And like a like a recovery halfway home. So uh, perfect that we're right in the middle. Right. Um, <laughs> But if you parked in that parking lot, sometimes they either gave you a ticket or didn't think twice about towing your car because the police right. circle there often. Yeah, so that's where I put the car. It didn't get towed, but then he is livid I always, when he so comes that, out. That rib worked very well then. Oh, yes, it did, it but I felt well. horrible. I've always Sorry, had, buddy. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> clearly, funny. We're, we got over it. <laughs> right. Uh, I've always had black cars. Yep. So in the, the at like 11, 12 o'clock at night in Manchester where the parking lot was not lit, I could not see my car, and right. it's not as covered as stickers as it is now. And I was just, I was losing my mind because my dad and I were sharing a car at the time. Right. And if I don't bring the car home, he can't go to work. Right. And he works overnights, so it's kind of like, yeah. oops, he needs that car. Right. And then, <laughs> fine. And then I think I even got more mad because you didn't have your yes, license. Yes, Buck Toy. He's like, dude, she doesn't, she doesn't even have a license. And I'm just like. But she didn't kill herself, and that's a good thing. And I didn't hit anybody, and we just hit the car, and we all laugh about it. At the time, <laughs> I was singing a different tune than I am now. Yeah. At the time. That's a good rib, though. It was. It, it was really a great is rib. a good rib. And, and Buck is, again, the mastermind yeah. of it. He, he is sounds like amazing. he is. You know, I, I got to get Rob in here. Marsh? No. No, Vitulli. Vitulli. Oh, Vitulli, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, Marsh, too. Marsh, too. Marsh, all too, the absolutely. All the, the Robs. Is, the yeah, reason, all the Robs. Yeah, every Rob Just do around. a Rob show. Hit me up. The only Most reason Robs. I said Marsh first is because I've only, it's only, like, people not in his close-knit circle that call him Rob. Like, so, like, every time I hear him and think of him, it's just Vitulli. Right. So. I've known Rob a long time, too. Yeah. I really have. He's a great guy. Definitely, I'm going to hit him up. Him and, um, what was his partner? Enigma. Yeah, that's who it was. Those uh, guys. Now, he, he he used to wrestle kind of as like a clown. Yeah. Sideshow. Yeah. Sideshow. Sideshow clown, yeah. yeah. The, the dark clown, yeah. Who yeah. was it? It was him. That was a good gimmick, too. P.T. Jester, Enigma, and... um. What was the bald guy? It, he became like an indie deathmatch wrestler. Yeah. Len Oddity. Yeah, Len oh, Oddity. Len Oddity. Yeah, Len Oddity. Yeah. And I remember once... I had probably met Len one or two, once or twice through Vitulli, and it was like we were friends for 20 years. 
Len's a wow. great guy, yeah. I was a ring announcer for three shows, and Len was on two of them. Yeah. And real quick, I, I, everyone that watched has probably heard this already. <laughs> no, but this but is Bobby, fun. I only did it three times. Yeah. Bobby Fish was on every show oh. with a different name. <laughs> Jerk Jackson, Madden Fisher, Bobby Fish. There, there you go. go. That's got to be a first. Yeah. So, all right, let's get back to the questions. Dan has another one. If the two of you were in a match against each other, who would win? So we were thinking about this on the way up. Statistically, I believe I have more victories over him. Both of my first single title wins were over him. But then, like, depending on where it was and it fit the story, like the first match we ever had in Proving Grounds, he won. Right. Nova, um, Nova for the um, uh, Zarba Cup. He uh, won. I won. Um, first MAW, I won. Then the second one, you won. And then uh, Pop-Up. What she won. It's very even. There's yeah. been some um, random spurts where it's right. like, okay, look, I have no one for you. Do you have an opponent? It's like, yeah, I'll bring him. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's decently even. Nice. But it, it, it's if it was a shoot fight, though, she'd probably knock me out again. No, I so, wouldn't. Smart answer. Right. No, smart we, answer. We, no, my girlfriend would kill me too. <laughs> Absolutely. We've had grappling competitions <laughs> with our friends, and I lose so fast because I'm not a grappler. I will say one of my, one of my favorite moments from us wrestling is that Nova show for the Zarba Cup. We were, uh, she was beating me up around the ring. This is like Chop was, Shop Two. Yeah. Okay. And In it Providence. Was, not one of the few times, but it feels like it. It was one of the, the times her parents had gone to a show, and they're sitting down, and she hits me, and I stumble back to him, and I go, did, I look at her dad, and I go, uh, did you teach her how to hit so hard as I'm stumbling back? And he just yells, She's, she was a hockey player, and I turn around, she gets me one more time. Nice. So I did not know that. You were a hockey player? Mm -hmm. nice. I played all four years in high school. I was the only girl on my team. That's, she still that's has my her first favorite goal. sport. I love hockey it's more my favorite, than wrestling. It's my yeah. favorite sport, too. Yeah. She has awesome. her first goal puck, too. Yeah. They, 2007? They, yes. I almost nice. said 17. I was like, oh, nope, I'm not that young. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. He's got one more. Who would you like to meet during your time wrestling? And also, I'd like to add to that. Is there anybody that you were psyched that you've already met? I have a story for that because it happened this weekend. So, um, but this past weekend was Anime Boston, which is huge, yeah. like, anime convention in the New England area. Gets Which like is why we're exhausted. 30-something thousand people. Right. And they brought in this guy who's like a heavy metal screamer, with, but dresses like in cute, with these two little anime girls and just like does cute music together, like cute little Japanese pop, yeah. but then he does the screamo metal part. He is an Australia, Australian wrestler who goes by the name Ladybeard. So take again someone who's like probably maybe close to six feet and big beard, big muscles yeah. and long hair and pigtails, a maid outfit and he's That's all silly. Wild. And I've been watching his matches and cosplay because again, he purposely does like female characters right, to be right. funny because it's great. Yeah. And like he's had matches in like DDT and stuff like that and he was there this weekend because they had a concert. And That's I cool. was so happy. I was like, if you're on, if there's a list of dream opponents that I feel mesh with my aesthetic, you're on it. And he right. was so happy to hear that. There was actually a spot. I didn't end up going to the concert, but my friends went and sent me a clip and Keegan the vegan was there. Oh, Hopefully wow. this isn't going to get him in yeah. trouble, but I don't think it would. Obviously, no, I don't think so. I don't think you're Because I don't know if they're going to publicize the clip, so I haven't shared it myself. Right. And he... Must have interrupted the concert, and Lady Beard has an impromptu, like, short three-second segment with them and then pins him for the win, and I'm like, I have never been so jealous of a vegan in my life. Wow. I wanted to do that. I would have bumped. I suplex me on the floor. I am hitting the right? microphone. That's wild. <laughs> suplex me on the floor. It would have been fine, but I get I get why they wouldn't right. have let me do it if it had been me, but, like, she meeting him. She got to meet him, so got uh, autograph from all three of them. That's pretty cool. I'm, so, I'm happy for you get a picture? Uh, I didn't get to take a picture with them because so it's whatever their agents allow and especially oh, with okay. like he lives in Japan he's Australian but he lives in Japan wow. and these two girls are Japanese so their like level of comfort is different right now and post pandemic era and right. I would respect that and we just asked could we at least film while the meeting is happening so it would be like something right. I could keep and the agent was okay with that. Oh that's cool that's very yeah. cool. Yeah he was great. He was great to talk so to. So, anyone that you would love to meet? So, um, this business has been very great to me. Uh, I went down, I think it was the Punk Taker WrestleMania, because that was in New Jersey. And I did a uh, SEMA 
uh, seminar. Nice. Uh, so got to meet SEMA, yeah. got to meet some Dragon Gate people. Um, um, Player Uno and Player Dose were there watching. Nice. I got to meet uh, one of my personal heroes and idols and Roderick Strong. Um, and then, again, through seminars, I've met AJ and Samoa right. Joe and, and, and people like that. That's awesome. Um, you went to the Chikara camp. I did Chikara's camp. So um, with That's Crispin good. Coles and and Icarus was there. Quackenbush was there. Uh, Solo Darling was there. Um, oh, I love her. Her corgi was there, and I'm so upset. Yeah. So <laughs> it, I it's, to go. right now, for me, it's just um, – it's Jay White, Will Ospreay, and Kazuchika Okada. Right. Um, those are my three biggest current influences. Um, so, but you've liked Will Ospreay like since he yeah, was a young boy. I, so. Yeah, since I've I've before anyone knew good though, of, before anyone Ospreay. knew yeah. who he was, that he would talk about him and show right. stuff all the time. Really, I've been a Jay White defense. Yeah, Osprey. I've been, I've been following since he's joined New Japan. Wow. Um, I've been a Jay White defender since before his time in a ring of honor right and um okada i've, I've been a fan of uh since since after tna i'm not gonna say i was a fan of him right before tna but that was because tna didn't use him right right uh they put him in the uh uh green was uh, green hornet right yeah the green yeah, hornet. yeah he was exactly. kato yeah. Yeah. he had yep. a few matches as okada but like yeah he didn't burst onto the scene until he went back to Japan. Yes. Um, and to so not to take up too much time talking about it, but like when Okada went back to Japan after TNA, beat Tanahashi for the IWGP right. title, everyone in the media and in not in the locker room, but all the fans were destroying. It's similar to um, Roman Reigns before he did the bloodline stuff. Like and everyone people was were booing them exactly. for, just because they thought it was a cool thing to do. Right. And, and really? like the, nobody believed in Okada because of the TNA stuff. Right. And and so to watch him uh, go from that negativity to one of, if not the greatest Japanese wrestler of the modern era. Like, yeah, it's it's like I I've dr I drive the bandwagon. For him, Osprey and right. Jay White, because the thing with Jay White is is a lot of times people are like, "Oh, he's white bread," like kind right. of playing on the name, but like he had no personality, whatever. And it's like, yes, in Ring of Honor when he was on Excursion, he didn't. He right. was just this. He wore all white. He had the the long mohawk to the side. He wasn't really anything. And then when he came back, was the Switchblade. Right. Joined Chaos. Turned on Chaos. Joined Bullet Club. Like. If you don't like Jay White after that, like you're just uh, planting your feet in the ground, right? You know what I mean. That as a character, as a right. wrestling, as a wrestler, you that's if, up to you. That's I'm not saying about that, but no, to I say it. like he's he doesn't have charisma or he has no character in. But to watch all that New Japan stuff and still say that, yep. I'm kind of like. Well, now you're just playing your feet in the ground. Yeah. You know now, what, I mean? what do you, what do you guys think of Tanahashi though? He's good too. So. Okay. You go first. No, <laughs> that's I to me like I, I get why people call him the New Japan equivalent of Hulk Hogan. Right. I think he's nice. I think he's fine. I don't real. I know in Japan gimmicks are either they're they're either are gimmicks or they're art gimmicks. Right. I never fully got him. I get why he's popular. I don't think he's bad. It just right. wasn't something that drew my attention. I'm more like. Tanahashi, because he was like this goofball. He had the cat. He yes. was like the bomb. He is this ridiculous. Hiromu Tanahashi. Hiromu yeah. Tanahashi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, because of my, <laughs> because of my allegiance to Okada, I don't like Tanahashi. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, because they were always in the main event right. of Wrestle Kingdom together. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. And and like, but like, I've enjoyed, like, the older he's gotten, the more I've enjoyed him, because um, I think he's just lightened up in and. You see this with wrestlers when the load is taken off them, right? And they can they the stress is gone and they can kind of relax a little bit and it shows a lot more, right? Um, and I think that that has shown especially because now he is the vice president of I forget his actual title, but he's he's now a big deal, right? Inside the company, kind of similar to to Triple H, right? Um, not to that level, but he he has a big part to play behind the scenes now. 
um, in the expansion of New Japan. Uh, yes. I always thought it was cool that he would play an electric guitar yeah. and then throw it into the crowd and watch people go like, oh my God. Right. That was always fun. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, we got another question now. Not from Dan, from Shea Kuchu. Shea, Shea Cash. Shea Cash. <laughs> Ask him, oh, how's, forgot to look. how's your back? Yeah. And if his mom like watching your matches? So my mom hated, my mom, my mom does not like them. She doesn't like watching any of my matches because I'm the baby boy. Yeah. Uh, the reason he asked about uh, my back is because the last time we stepped in the ring, he gave me a back chop that caused a uh, cut, and I don't know if I have a scar. Uh, it's not like a scar. It's it, yeah, actually, no, it might scar. It, yeah, I have <laughs> like I I had like a cut like this big on my back from a back chop from a back wow. chop, and uh, so when they. So if anyone thinks that Shay's not a heavy hitter, yeah, oh, he's definitely a heavy. He's hitter. a heavy hitter. Who's lying to you? Yeah. <laughs> There's a few times where he's hit me, and I'm like, well, I'm awake now. Yeah, uh, that was definitely one of them. I thought it was the funny thing about that too is I was like, I had I was in the locker room, and my mother was leaving, and uh, I had my shirt off because I was changing, and she goes, Derek, you're back, and she just goes to walk into the locker room. <laughs> Like not even no no like awareness. Yeah, and, like yeah. her mother instincts. She just in. sees you and right. makes a beat. And I was like, whoa, whoa I'll, I'll come outside. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so my mother doesn't like watching me wrestle Shay. She doesn't like. Well, she watching probably me don't watch... like Shay now either. She no, I don't know about that. She hasn't met Shay. I don't Shay think she yet. likes you, Shay. Not but, if you beat up her baby boy. Uh, I did have a cut on there for from the show that it happened at to the next show where we saw Shay, which was I think like. Two or three weeks later. They were very close together. Yeah, yeah Shay's definitely a heavy hitter. Oh, yeah. Don't oh, let yeah. anybody tell you. But it was hilarious. <laughs> he was just like, oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. It was super All right. funny. All right. <laughs> Matthew Dufresne. Ask Conway if he remembers the mod is coming out <laughs> early for a spot. <laughs> oh, so I woke up. There's, there's a, a video there's of this. There's a whole video. Really? Because, oh, yeah. Because so the martyrs uh, are great guys. Um, Matt Deadwood now, and I don't know if There's no Mad wrestles. Yeah, anymore. I don't know I don't if think he, he does. does, but he just um, comes to watch. But um, and WAW, they were the tag team, the martyrs. We had them with uh, the, um, the uprising. Uprising, thank you. And they were supposed to do a run in, and th they weren't early. They were late because no, they were early. Were they early? That was the joke. <laughs> oh, because. That's right, because Matt comes running out, and then Nomad's nowhere to be seen. But when you see, and this is us watching it downstairs, because right. WAW, we had a camera that led downstairs, so right. you could see those spots, because you'd have to run upstairs. And so when you watch the, the hard cam, you see Nomad run, you see them run out, Nomad realize the spot is early, yeah. and stop. Just stop. Just stop. But uh, Matt keeps running. Yeah. So downstairs, both recalling the story and in real time, I'm like, and Nomad. Nomad? Nomad. <laughs> and Nomad. And he's still he's just standing there. Just, just, yeah. just going then, back and forth going, what are we doing? What, like yeah, recapping like the pacing, whole thing. Like a hype man. <laughs> right. Like just going back and forth. And I'm like, just do go. go. <laughs> just do the spot. <laughs> And like I think you recorded it. Right? I recorded your reaction. It's the, one of the funniest things that the whole locker room was like I just laughing at. And I retold the story downstairs, <laughs> and it is one of the funniest things. And they they're great guys, but I every time I see Nomad now, it's just like before we say anything, it's like Nomad, <laughs> yeah. Nomad, Nomad. I so, think you doing that. Yeah, it was a great story to tell. That's awesome. All right, well this one's for you, Delilah. What's your favorite uprising moment? So. The faction wasn't a faction very long. Who was in the faction? So it was myself, Kayla Manson, Draven Filth, The Martyrs, Crispin Coles. Now, Kalem, we forced. I actually know a bunch of those. Yeah, so we forced Kalem to be in there. He lost a match and by chance, you know, had to be forced to be in right. it. Not exactly like, keep in mind, this is like 2018, early 19, so this is like, think of kind of the way the bloodline ish goes, but when Sami Zayn's clearly the outlier and everyone's like, but Caleb, my character, which is one thing I know I'm going to allude to in another question later, the way I developed that monster demon character, yeah. she stopped talking. So heavily relied on either Crispin or somebody else to talk for me. And the logic was, well, none of you fans cared what she had to say when she chose to talk. So it gave me the ability to be more expressive right. and even pick up a few like sign language cues without 
having to use actual words. And the way that the people in the faction played off of that and reacted visually right. to it or was so much fun. You almost like forgot you were in a serious moment. And especially also I had to like, because Caleb was our like our lap dog, we legit led him around like right. a dog and made him walk and we'd tell him to sit and be bad boy or like whatever. It was just so much fun. It's like a level of wrestling you almost don't appreciate because you expect there to be a like an audience listening for you. Right. But now I have no choice but to communicate in a way that like doesn't involve it. So it's like it forces my acting to go right. up. It forces other people to react to me because I don't know. There probably is in the history of this sport someone who is a mute and or deaf right. wrestler. Spencer Slade's a deaf wrestler. There actually. you go. He and that's like or even like granted he didn't, I guess, have much of a career later on. But like look at Zach Gowan. He had yeah. one leg. Yeah. And it's just the types of wrestlers who are able to just go, I don't care what my limits are. I'm going to do it anyway. Right. And it was like I had a whole new appreciation for going, okay, now how do I get this character across without verbalizing anything? My Gosh. favorite part of the uprising with your character was the backpack you had. Oh. <laughs> so I had this little teddy bear backpack because I... I created this entire persona that now I get to use again in Proving Ground around this style in Japan and I'm not going to take up too much time talking about called Menhera. Look it up. It's all about t turning the mental illness you suffer with into being cute. So I had this backpack of a teddy bear that I put like a band-aid over his eye and all these cute things and inside I had these prescription pill bottles that I put with cute little stickers and stuff right. like that and in them I had pills that would knock you out. They were just Pez. Right. But it was like such a funny thing because like there we had a, a guy who was vegan and I had bought like vegan deli meat that day, but I like force fed him meat. Right. I had all these cute, I had one that had like little tacks in one. It was just the cutest little aesthetic. That's awesome. It was just like, here, how do I do something different? Yeah, and then I slightly got upset later on and luckily it, there hasn't seemed to be the correlation. There may be now that I'm putting it out there, but then when the whole Alexa Bliss with The Fiend came mm. up, it was starting to be similar. So I'm like, well, if I ever want to do this character again, everyone's going to think I copied it and no one's going to believe me, right. even if I have the footage. Yeah, and you, and you were doing it first. <laughs> and it's different, but still, like... Yeah, you and nah. Crispin Coles, sorry. No, uh, okay. You and Crispin Coles, the, the, the dynamic you two had, especially no. with the song you had, was fantastic. Now, uh, K Caleb Manson, that's our freight train song. It is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. What's up, Matt? Freight train? Um, I don't Caleb, know I he's... can't say what I normally say to you because it's an ex you... yelling explicit at each other when we say hi. Ah, there you go. <laughs> did he change his name or did he think about it? Oh, no, I think he, no, no, I think, Caleb. Oh, no, he okay. still kept it as Caleb okay. Manson. Because he was, he had planned to go to the... He did go to Florida he for did some go to training. Florida. He went to the um, uh, Sean Spears and um, Tyler Breeze school. Oh, okay. I think he got hurt. He got hurt during training and then oh, has wow. been back up. And yeah, has he been, came back and then... He, he has, as far last time I knew, he had an agreement with them to go back down. At some point. At some That's point. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for him. All right. Reginald Knight, which one of you loves me more? Oh, Ricky. <laughs> it, I think it's Richard. Well, is Reginald it, is, Reginald, is just I'm going to call him that from now I'm on. I'm just going to call him. Um, right. Did I write his name wrong? It's, yeah. it's Richard. It's fine. Wow. No, Regin oh, Reginald Knight. I love it. I'm keeping that. It fits better. Yeah. All right, the Reggie. The is, is, is the... <laughs> You love them more? <laughs> but They're the same person. That's the thing. Literally take me and what? turn me into a guy. That's him. They're the same person. It, it, we have the same personality, same oh, right, jokes. All right. I thought you was like, oh, same no, no, thing. no, 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 good, good. I was going to say they're, they're, they're the exact same personality. And it's funny to me in the car when we're going to shows and whatever, because we've, we've, we're the triumvirate up in. In Green Mountain and in We've done anywhere. it in NCW, NCW, too. yep, I was going to say. And um, it's just funny being in the car with them because they'll start to annoy, annoy each other yeah. the same way. And they both in verse get upset at each other <laughs> the same way. And he has to just sit there and be like, I'm just stuck with you. I have to with deal you. with it. I, That's fine. funny. That's pretty funny. All right. We brought him up earlier. The mullet man, Travis Hinton. Could you each share a funny memory of, of funny stories from wrestling? 
I mean, <laughs> funny. I mean, for me, oh it's, it's the riding the, with Dick Lane in the car is always so going to be some of the biggest. He highlights. really talks like that. Yeah. Oh, and when he's I thought that he, was a gimmick. No, I really did. No, no, he no, came no. Here. no. And he, then he dances while he's driving and oh, he's all happy. While he's going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> and I, I sing when I'm driving. He too, does so. too. Oh he, my he, God, he sings, he's he dances. Great. He, uh, I have videos of that but, too, which make me happy. Because I'm in the back trying to just nap and I'm like, this isn't happening. Me, uh, being in the car with Dick Lane, um, anytime <laughs> Stephen Lust wants to just be Stephen Lust, it's fun. Um, Buck with the, the, there was, so I think I brought this up on the last time, but like me and Buck were a tag team and we had an ape, uh, our guy in an ape mask as our, our manager for like a few times, and it was Steven Loss. We now, can't, we, we can't few, say the tag team name, but right. it, I've, figure I've it out. Cut, we've, we cut a few promos, and they are just some of the funnest promos. That's awesome. Me and Buck in a promo one time, uh, this guy named Matt Bishop was uh, kind of doing the backstage role, and he had a microphone. And we've never done microphones backstage at WAW. We never did it. Right. You could hear everything fine anyways. So Bishop has this microphone, and then while he's talking to Buck and I, I just start pulling the wire up. And then I just go, what is this attached? And then me and Buck just start playing off each other. Right. And just oh, So anytime, anytime I can cut a promo with Buck, that's great. Flax is is a oh riot. Oh, my God. Not Flax. Um, no, oh, my God. That, I, I, you awesome. know what? I have it. So uh, Chad Epic had ran a show at the old Bell Time Club location, Rated yes. R. So this was like the second one. And you know, the yep. commuter rail goes right by that building. Yes. So Flax is a goat. For anyone who doesn't know, freaking Flax is literally like a goat yeah. humanoid. Yeah. And he was wrestling this guy. And you hear the... the and he just goes, past. train! And falls over like a goat does in he real does the, life. Yeah. You could see, from the hard cam, you see the boys in the tent all lose their minds. You watch the crowd. So lose. People got up and had to turn away because they were laughing so hard because he just went, train! It was one of those things in life that you can't plan for. Right. It was so good. It was good. so good. It You're was like, oh my is, God. I've I was said crying. this before. Flax is, is so smart when it comes to this business. It, it, that is just is a perfect example of it. It was it's so just, good. There, I don't know. Nobody knows what else they did. Not that nobody knows what else they did in that match, but like no the one. whole match was like had to like almost take a restart after that <laughs> because was everyone was like, so "Okay, wait, is he dead?" <laughs> Anytime I've fallen off the apron was yeah. funny. He slips uh, off it a lot. One time, my it was right after my uncle had passed. I was wearing one of his shirts, and I had was about to go, get. Uh, I was about to jump over the rope to go in the ring, and I slipped, and I just stare at my dad, and we just start laughing because like. I said it on camera. I was like, Uncle Bear just pushed me off yeah. the apron because he would thought it'd be so funny. My dad was laughing because he knew the exact same thing. Anytime I he fall knew off what the you apron, were thinking. Yeah, as soon, anytime I fall off the apron, it's funny to me. That's awesome. I got to get Flax on here too. You do. Flax, Flax is so awesome. Much All right, Mullet Man has a second one. Thanks, Travis, for the questions. What's your own worst experience from wrestling? Do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? You might be faster because like you I thought about it on the way up and there's a handful of them, but there's one that honestly I've always wanted to kind of like talk about and like that I it's like hopefully a lesson to anybody watching this not to do this. Go ahead. OK, so I'll go first real quick. Um, so when thinking about the question, it was um, very early on in my W.A.W. career, just a bad uh, ego and attitude, um, which I believe I've gotten in check. But I mean, you have moments there. See, <laughs> so uh, I'm that, being honest. Uh, no, I know you are. Uh, also, I don't think I found my voice in WAW when it comes to like talking and promos as I do now. Right. Uh, there were moments, but sometimes when I watch back that stuff, it's like I want to go back in time and be like, "We're gonna fix, do this differently, right. or whatever." I and hate then, you. Which that kind of works. That's one of the questions later too. Right. So. <laughs> well, and and then uh, I think my biggest regret was it happened with Chan and Thomas, um, who is blowing up right now. Some believe. Um, Incredible, well deserved, incredible wrestler. Right. Um, so uh, one night at NCW, I wasn't doing anything. Uh, I had a, uh, uh, I had too many drinks, which is not the excuse, but I should have shouldn't have done it. Regardless, um, it was around the time Merrimack Cheese was going around. Yep. Um, I had sent Merrimack Cheese a few things, um, and one of them was Channing Thomas selling gear, um, which. Um, I was, which if I've always been the, I've always said, make your money how you make your money. Right. Um, 
so it was very out of character for me to do that. I've bought in, uh, I bought Mike Bennett's kick pads before he was getting rid of them. I bought them. I've used them. Right. They're now in the possession of Robbie the Giant. Um, but anyways, back to that. Um, I sent Mayor McCheese that post. Right. Uh, it got back to Channing um, that also, I sent it. He posted it. publicly too. Being right. Like, well, what'd and, you do? Right. Exactly. And it's and um, it's something like me and Channing have talked. I've apologized. I apologized that night, and then the next week at um, what was King's La- promotion? No. Um, no. Uh, Sully. Sully Banger. Sully Banger. Excuse Live me. Prov. Live Prov. I apologized to him in person about it. Right. But it's something that. Um, is one of my biggest regrets. I still think about it, not every day, but right. it's still a thought because that's just the person I am. I live in the past too much. Um, but um, that's one of, if not, it's that um, bad, terrible judgment call. Not even a judgment call, but right. bad Also not moment. even knowing really So do like you guys know you who right. Mayor McCheese is? We well, were didn't it switch a lot? Didn't it switch like multiple times? Well, a long time ago, it was like a group of kids, yeah. group of guys. But at the end, I called the guy out. I and think I remember. He's, all of a sudden, he decided to go away. And I think it's because someone knew who he was. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll tell you off I, had, I won't say it here. I had, but I'll tell you off yeah. With it going to, to Channing so quickly and being posted so quickly. Lumberjake um, ripped you a new one that very night. BRG, I, I apologize to yeah. BRG. I apologize to, I ripped to you John a new Casey. One. <laughs> Lumberjake, I apologize to her. I apologize to everybody. Um, That's all you can and, do in and, that situation. And, and, and you thank, did the right thing. Right. And thank, and I'm very thankful to John Casey and NCW because they, at the time, that's where it was. Right. That's where the incident happened. They could have kicked yeah. me out and yeah. not brought me back. Right. And, and that would have affected her. May have affected other people, right? Um, and I'm very thankful that I didn't. I'm thankful now that I'm announcing for NCW um, and doing that with Simon Eddie, um, nice. and that's going very well. But yeah, thankful to everybody, and I've apologized numerous times to everybody. Um, that's that's my biggest. So okay. mine, and again, I'm. I'll do it more of in the vague way because honestly, the person who was the perpetrator is no longer in the business, okay. so I don't think it matters. Um, and this is going to be one of the cases of if you know, you know. So it was at a House of Bricks show. And it was, they didn't have a women's championship yet, but I was a special guest referee for um, this match with the perpetrator and Izana. And I think they were like a veteran. And this person, I try very hard to get along with everybody. If people don't want to get along with me, right. that's fine. I don't, especially if I've never done anything to right. you and you've never met me and you just want to look down at me, fine, whatever. Go, go about your life. Right. And this person always liked to kind of pull a vet card, and I didn't. That never settled well with me, because if you're a veteran, you don't need to tell me that. Exactly. And the result of the match was Izana was supposed to win, and I was a special guest referee. And because I was new to traveling and was also a lot shyer than I am now, and Izana was also very new, this person bullied us into changing the result of the match. Izana wow. was supposed to go over. She goes, no, I've been doing this for so long. I've been doing so much. For, I deserve to win this. Yeah. And like the whole time I was sitting there as the time went to go on for us to go out, I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I could see in Izana's face. We're like, we we're both like, what do we do? How do right. we stand up for ourselves? You know, still finding our voice. And you, the match ends, the result changes you watch baker who was filming the yeah. roman cam instantly shut it off put it down he realizes what's happened right. and he's angry and i the plan spot was after i go over to jordan take the trophy hand it to her right and then jordan lay her, yes, yes and then lay her out yep. and he's like i need you to take her head off right now and then i try very hard not to be that person who gives right. receipts and i laid into this person because I was angry. I was upset at myself. And to this day, it has not bothered me that in that moment, as I'm counting the three, I hear her say to Izana something to the tune of, don't forget that you agreed to change this. In that moment, if I had had any of the sense that I had now, I would have stopped. I would have thrown the match out and changed it on the end. And if I got myself blacklisted from that company at that point, I would have. But I didn't. And then Baker talked to us after and he's like, why didn't you guys say something? And he could see like we were both like he's mad at us for not saying anything, but at the same time was more understanding of you guys were being pushed to do something by someone who shouldn't have done it. Now, this person's not in wrestling anymore, so it doesn't matter. But it was just like. 
don't do that. If, okay, someone who, you've been doing a lot of work for this person for years, but someone new is who they want to put over. Right, exactly. It's fake. Like, I'm sorry, wrestling is fake. It is writing on a paper. Titles should not be like, oh, I'm jealous that this person wins all the time, or this person gets a title, or, oh, I should be the one going over because I've been doing more than you. Yeah. Get over yourself. Exactly. Do you pull that at your job? Right. If you do, I wonder about your employer. But, like, that to this day has bothered me, and I have numerous times said to Aizana, who is one of my best friends in wrestling now, like, I'm so sorry that I didn't step up that night and do something because I could have stopped. I didn't right. have to count the three. But... I did, and I will never do that again. And if I were to ever hear something like that happening again, I would well, never go great. along you with learned, it. Well, that's great. You learned from it. You yeah. really yeah. did. That's you know? all you can do. Um, and Isana's a very good worker. So listen, uh, Reginald Knight, actually, <laughs> I have it written right this time. It says <laughs> Richard Knight. No, it's Reginald. It's Reginald. Forever. All right, Reggie. I'm changing it in my Reggie, phone. Reggie. Here comes your other question, Reggie. Uh, the worst injury you've gotten and or the worst you've injured somebody else. I'll do mine. I first. was going to say, do you, again, mine are shorter than yours, so. Yeah, and just need to make sure we keep going. Um, so I, again, I have only directly, I don't, I, in the time I've counted overall, there's a handful of directs that I've either directly been a part of or something that, even if it wasn't my fault, I consider it my fault or I'm instantly afraid not only for the person that's hurt, is it going to reflect poorly on me? Uh, one time, the one I directly did was I had these two chairs taped together. So yeah. imagine like a lightsaber kind of thing. And I s went and slapped Caleb with it. And he just, I don't know if it missed his hand or whatever, and it hit here and just... Uh -huh. And I felt bad because he was supposed to go over in that match. And I was like, nope, nope, send him downstairs. That It's it, it's bad. I don't know how bad. And I was a fearful right. for his eye. And I go to the other people in the match and I'm not supposed to be out. I was like, nope, roll me up. I'm taking him to the hospital. Like, I don't care. Figure right. it. And I was like, figure out who should go over. And we, I was like, we can fix it. Yeah. Um, the other two that are most recent, which again, I worry about is both of them were to Tony Spencer. There was one time we had a very- He deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. He everyone, deserved those. I was everyone just thinking tells I can't me, wait to hear him. Everyone tells me, they're like, no, it was Tony being Tony. You didn't do anything. But of course I'm crying because I'm thinking it's her. Tony outside of here is one of my nice best person. friends. Yep. I love Tony. And Don't I are, cry now. He and I are good friends. So we had a quick match in an Elkmania or a Proving Ground and he- the ring was shorter, yeah. and he's tall. So he comes to run in like full head of steam, and I roll out of the way like I'm supposed to. He went over and hit part of the ring post and instantly, psh, and I'm rolling him up, and all of a sudden I see blood dripping in on my hands, and I'm like, am I hurt? And then I see him, and I'm like, oh. And then once the match ended, I was like, do you want to go home? He goes, nope. <laughs> Finish the match, and I'm just covered in blood, just like, ah. And then the second time was me versus L. In an Irish Spring death match, which I, those matches don't happen anymore because both the ones I have been in, which are the last two, and Tony was in the other one, we go crazy with it and try to literally make yep. it a death match. I had built, you know, like an Iron Maiden. Like yeah. those, so I had tried to build one of those out of a box. I had done it before in a match and been put in it with, right. with wooden skewers. Oh, wow. And I had been put in one that I built. But then I wanted to make one for Tony. It didn't work. So I had this flat board that I cut skewers down and had it sticking up like a bed of nails, but right. a bed of skewers. And I told Tony was okay with taking the bump. But I told him I'm going to do it like my curb stomp where you're on your knees and down. That way, as you're going down, you push your hands out, you splat, you can protect Knock yourself. Down, yeah. It got such a pop. So Tony goes, do it again. So I go to sign him up, set him up for the same thing. He goes, no, 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 no. Throw me off the rope to hit me with a line. And I'm like, okay. I do, what? Right. I do it. And the way he landed, the skewer went right in his arm and he couldn't pull it out. Wow. To which then he was more upset. I show up to Salem Hospital because I got, I had blood all over me from my, from the match. So right. I was cleaning myself up immediately. So I don't walk into the ER thinking I need help. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. I sat with him till like three in the morning before they took it out. That but was I, and idea. he was like, Dick. he goes, oh, I got have made so much money off Mer sympathy merch. And I'm like. That's funny. Don't. Now, the one where he hit his head on the post and it got blood. Was that the same night that the hoods jumped you? No, no, no. No? No. Okay. No. Because I think I was there for that one, too. I've only no, been I to think a it few was. PG shows. I think it was. I, I think it was, too. I didn't go to the hospital with him that time, but I went the bigger one. Oh, maybe. But I, I, I really do My think it was. My memory goldfish, so. All right. Jerry Lane for Delilah. What's it been like working with Joey Warner and Lazarus in the void? <laughs> Good old Jerry. Yeah, I love you, Jerry. Um, I love it. 
it was nice. I'm always doing my best work when I have stories or something to sink like my teeth into right. when I'm just throwing into random things. It's not that I don't think I do good. It's just, it's, I have more to go with. And I get to be this character, like this version of the monster that I had before, but I talk, but it's, it's nice because like these are two people I've known a long time. We get right. along very well personality wise so we can go out there and have a lot of fun and have a lot of different stories. Like right now the current big thing is we have a feud with Osiris and Osiris has a problem with the fact that Warner's, the versions of Warner's cult, The Void is like about redefining yourself and bringing in the, out the best of yourself. Well, that's bad business for Osiris who's his like cult following is no, everyone praises and is there before me. So why right. am I going to watch this other guy like do it almost like for free and bring out a good thing. No, I want subservience. I don't want right. people to be on the same level as me. Like he kidnapped me and now they've brought out the demon in me. We're having a dog collar match in Whoa. April on the 13th in Beverly. And nice. I have had one match with Osiris and I have been wanting another one for years because it was maybe four or five years ago and it was only in front of like 12 people. So wow. now, Beverly consistently gets at least 100 something yeah. people. So the crowd, they don't know what they're about to watch. Right. Like he and I are ready to kill it and possibly each other nice. for this. Now real quick before I get to your part of the question is, um, all right, let's just go with this. For Derek, how does it feel <laughs> being a proven ground tag team champ with Kevin Giles? If you guys could see this, That's Derek bought, brought the proven ground Tag he Team Championship it. belt, and it's heavy. It is heavy. A lot of people, are, every time, like I said, very you, heavy. They go to grab it, and they're like, "Oh God, uh, I'm wearing the No Future T-shirt." Um, it's it's weird because I never thought I did and didn't think we'd ever be here. Right. Giles and I have teamed a little bit in Elk. We've teamed a little bit in WAW in Proving Ground. We've right. teamed. Um, and but he's a big dude he he's a is very a, big dude. he is um and it's one of these things where we team and then something happens with one of us right and then it never feels like we can uh connect to get to this point right um so late last year when it uh all the pieces were finally aligning um Derek Simone was like it's either now or never right and both Giles and I were were got on the same page, which wasn't that hard. Right. Um, and uh, there's a very short list of people that I would want to hold a tag team championship. Right. But when it comes to this belt and this company, yeah, there's only one, and it is him. Yeah. Um, because of how, because like me, him, Delilah, uh, Joey Warner, like. Those are the day ones. That's what this says in, in Kanji. Oh, okay. It's day yeah. one. Um, but she's been a pillar of, of Proving Ground, um, doing her own thing, and now she's doing it with Joey Warner. Same with Joey Warner. He's been doing his own thing. But right. like we, when we came to started Proving Ground, because um, Simon A has told the story so many times, this is what we always wanted. It never was there. Um, because it had when Proving Ground started, there never was tag titles. Right. But now that there is one, um, it's what we came back to do, came back together to do. And I, I, this is one of the few times I will speak for him. Yeah. Um, we don't want to disappoint not only the Proving Ground fans, but the people that held it before us right. and Derek Simon A. Right. Because you can when you if you watch the match, the second that the second Craig hands me that belt. And I think uh, Dallas McCarthy said it on, I just, it, it's flowing. Nice. I'm just nice. gushing. And you can ask her, when I came downstairs, I was uncontrollable. Wow. I was just, because yep. it, it was a- It meant a lot to you. It does. And, and I- It's and, awesome. And as much as I agree with her that these are just props, it's more so the, the meaning behind the prop that got me in the journey that not only me, uh, the only part that I took, but Giles took, and the journey we took together, because she's been there since day one. The journey too, and it's if if and when she gets a title, because I always say she's far beyond deserved. Right. Um, she'll have the same feelings, and it's that 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 journey, um, and for the hardwork heroes when we face them in April, Barnaby and Aaron, 
Great right? guys. I don't think I've ever stepped in the ring with either one of them. Oh, wow. But um, this is, I don't know if it's just going to be hard work right. for them. Every match we've had has been war for these belts. Nice. And that started with the Hoods. Yep. The Hoods wanted to go to war, so we go to war. Right. If these belts are going to leave us, we are going to have to lose a war, and I don't know if it's just going to take them hard work. Right. So you gotta set the tone. All you right, gotta set the tone. Yes. You gotta set the tone, boys. We got seven minutes, a couple more questions, and I want you to plug some stuff, so I'm gonna have to cut out some questions. Uh, Dick Lane. I am Dick Lane. <laughs> I love and miss you both every day. I'm reading For each of voice. them, what is their favorite match that they had against me, Dick Lane, and why? Well, luckily, you Dick go Lane. First. I am Dick Lane. You can kind of go quick. Since My you favorite you match with it. Dick Lane. <laughs> Uh, it, it was either the uh, MA, MAW uh, Base State title match, which I think was a title for title. I think he was the MAW uh, New England champion uh, against me with the no, Base State title. Ground. No, it was, was MAW. It? Yeah, it was MAW. Or the match she's gonna she's referring to, where it was my Base State versus his All Star title. Okay. Which Tony Spencer then pushed me through. Dick Lane through that table, right? Um, and pin, and I think Tony pinned me. But those those two are the two that stand out. Um, Mine has to be, and again, I've had more matches alongside Dick right. than I have. I was kayfabe married to him in NCW. Um, what has to be again? Probably my MAW United States Championship match. Again, for me, being someone who. A lot of people, when you come through like places like the Chop Shop or where multiple people run right. in the same building, you see a lot of the same talent. So then when someone who's kind of an outsider shows up and it's kind of, you feel like hard, maybe it's not the case, but it feels like hard sometimes for me to mesh because these people see right. each other all the time. These people pretty much, a lot of the rosters in certain parts of the New England area pretty much all have the same people. Right. So hope you don't book on the same day or lots of double shots are happening. Yeah. But when I was told that I was going to win the United States Championship like from Dick Lane, who was like one of the biggest heels at the time, I was like, what? And he's this was a like, meta villain. This was like, yeah, this was like, this was like my first. That's right. That's what it was. I'm sorry. This was either like my first example of, um, it's like one of my favorite lines from this comedian Christopher Titus says he used the thing. It's either step up or step aside. Right. I stepped up. Oh, because if I didn't nice. step up, I would have had to step aside. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. We still got time. JP Griffin, for each of you, any advice for someone with a similar background to you trying to make it in the independence? And who was it? Anyone that helped you the most? Do you want me to get this one? Yeah, I, that's this. A, I, I will. I mean, Chad Epic. Yep. Like no matter what anybody feels about yep. him, that I love man. I Chad Epic, so. And a lot of people don't like I Chad do. Epic, and you know what? That's great because he, all we all, a lot of us came from a similar background of being like from a quote unquote backyard fed with a building that all we cared about was putting on fun shows for the right. community, and now have gone out and taken over New England. So if you're referencing maybe you're not like from a school or whatever honestly what i've always done at least for me i've bet on myself i have so i am i am not truly an athlete but and i've had minimal training like when the, there was there used to be a school in malden okay on like the third level and vatuli and um i don't remember stalker's real name he was a very tall asian man i don't remember his real name maybe it is also sean uh. um Took us there, and I did some rolling around there. Any times nice. I've gotten, I've been, to, we've been to NRG. I've gotten to pop into like Bakers from time to time. I've gone to, uh, we've gone to the next gen. We've gone to what's the place in Concord? Is that next gen? That, no, uh, that's, that's New England. Uh, 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 elite Pro Wrestling. We went to there. Elite. We've been to the one in Derry. What? No, we've uh, Auburn. Auburn. That's, that's like, next so gen. So I'm very good at popping in and right. out. I'm not good at staying in one spot. I love learning from multiple sources. Like done seminars, stuff like that. I always tell any promotion who is like, well, what school are you affiliated with? I'm honest, I'm not. Here's my background, here's my matches, give me a shot. You don't like me, never have me back. And that's really only happened once and I feel like that was a victim more of the match that happened than right. it was of me. For me, it's it's, it's similar to her. It's Chad, uh, Derek Simonetti, yeah. Mike Montero. Those two have helped me a lot in PG. JC. JC has been a, a fantastic John help. Casey. Yep, yeah. John yep. Casey's been a fantastic help. Brickhouse. Um, I apologize as, if we're missing anybody. I'm, uh, as much as we've gone to war, uh, Davy Cash, he's been great. Yeah. Um, but I'd say if you find the time, and and we're trying to find time, and we're just very busy and with work and life in general, right. it's like if you find the time, 
go to a school for a day, do a drop in, go to the gym, just try to get as much content for yourself in as possible, whether nice. it be going to shows and just help out. That's how I got on NCW. I just helped out. She Don't got be a booked jerk. on NCW. Don't be a jerk. Yeah. Be a nice person. Right? Yeah. Well, that seeing you both brought up Chad, his question's all taken care of now. Yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, here. honestly, the end for his is just honestly like and Hopefully this doesn't change any potential booking plans in anyone's mind for me. I honestly don't have that much time left in wrestling. I'd like to get to the point in life where it's right. time to start a family. Yeah. And good good on to everyone who's able to have children and come back to it. I personally just don't want to do that for myself. Yeah. I will still be involved. I'll put on shows. I'll do merch. I'll do right. all these other things. Just yeah. I can't say I'll never because I'm right. sure my kids want to see me bump someday. But like, I'm getting to that point where it's about to be time for to be a mommy. All right. Why don't you guys do some plug-in? So... We have Proving Grounds on April 13th. That is in Beverly, Massachusetts. Yep. There is NCW happening in Bristol, Rhode Island on May 4th. I'm a, ch I'm a cheat. Show. I was the rock and I wrote stuff down. That's all right. Or anything. They have a show later on in May as well. Actually, the night before our, so May 16th, 17th. 17th. 17th, yeah. And then on May 18th, yes. I'm putting on, I put on a show in Newton like once a year. I always do it for charity because that's something like I had instilled for me in WAW that I'd rather give back to a community than do monetary gain. That's awesome. Don't get me wrong. I, it's nice to have money, but like right. I enjoy making people happy. Yep. And during the pandemic, I did a lot of work with the Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress. They had been to shows before where I right. had done groups, but I did like Zoom presentations for them and had one-on-ones with members of their community who adore wrestling. That's, that's awesome. all they wanted to talk about and to talk to me, yeah. who is just down here on the totem pole. So we're doing a show officially under their banner on May 18th in Newton, Massachusetts at the Newton Elks Lodge. And awesome. like, not only will they all be there in attendance, it's also open to the public, right. but we're gonna donate a lot of the money to them. That is awesome. That really is. Uh, you guys know I have a special needs stepdaughter yep. who I love so much. I didn't get to see her on Easter this year because uh, one of the people where she lives, they got COVID. Oh, okay. So yeah. they had to, you know, yeah. quarantine. Yeah. but. Derek, thank, thank you. you. Delilah, thank it's you. always it a, a pleasure. pleasure seeing you guys. Um, again, we'll do this again. All we got was fan questions, so hey, you guys can come back again. Yay! Guys, we're out. Bye! Peace. Hi, guys. I hope you're enjoying the show. Listen, I could use a little help to grow my YouTube channel. So if you could please like, share, and subscribe. That's most importantly, subscribe. Send me a direct message, and I'll give you a shout-out here on the show. My YouTube channel is real simple. It's just my name. Leo Connors. Thanks in advance. Peace.